right, so this is our last lesson video for the whole year. So this is lesson video three for chapter 10, our last chapter of the year. And so we're continuing to talk about freshwater pollution and things like that. And so in lesson video two, we ended with talking about enrichment of ponds and lakes and things like that. So remember, when something is enriched like a body of water, it's called eutrophication. So oligotrophic lakes, they are unenriched. The water is very clear and they have small populations of aquatic organisms. So here we go, we have clear water, small populations of organisms. This would just be the normal pond or lake scenario. Um, so they have not been over fertilized with a lot of runoff from different sources like sewage. Eutrophic lakes suffer from eutrophication. So the difference is they tend to have cloudy water. The cloudy water is due to the large number of algae and cyanobacteria. So see, you can see in this lake or pond, you can barely even see the water. There's so much growth in there. Water is enriched with inorganic nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Both of those come from fertilizers and things like that. So runoff near a farm where they use a lot of fertilizers for their crops would be in danger of making lakes or ponds around there become eutrophic. And so that becomes a problem again because all that algae and cyanobacteria use up the oxygen in the water and then the fish can't survive. So where does all this water pollution come from? Water pollutants come from both natural and human activities and they reach waterways from either point or non-point sources. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what's the difference in a point source pollution and non-point source. Well, point source pollution is water pollution that can be traced to a specific point of entry into a waterway. For example, it came from pipes, the sewers, or ditches. Another example of point source pollution would be an ocean um, liner that has an oil spill. So like if there's a large oil spill in the ocean and we know it came from this ship because it dumped a bunch of barrels of oil, that would be point source pollution. Um, point source pollution is a little bit easier to control because we can figure out where it's coming from, figure out how to stop it or fix it. Non-point source pollution is the harder one because pollution that enters a body of water over large areas rather than a specific single point of entry. So runoff from different areas is usually considered non-point solution, uh, sorry, non-point source pollution because it can come from anywhere. That runoff could have traveled miles before it reaches a river or a stream and then eventually reaches the ocean. Um, <clears throat> for example, precipitation washes pollutants out of soil and causes polluted runoff to enter local rivers over a wide area as the runoff drains from the land to the waterway. So the non-point source type pollution is harder to correct because it happens over a large area and sometimes it's difficult to even figure out what the source is at that point. So agriculture is actually the leading source of surface water quality impairment in the U.S. So us trying to feed ourselves is what causes the most water pollution. Who would have thought? So it's actually responsible for 72% of river water pollution. So where does it come from? Well, like we've talked about, fertilizer runoff causes water enrichment. That's what we just talked about, that eutrophication. Chemical pesticides can leach into soil and then waterways. So not only are we trying to fertilize our crops, we usually have to spray them with pesticides to keep pests from eating them. Um, and so those chemicals can be dangerous to the water supply. Soil erosion. Certain farming practices allow soil to erode very quickly. Remember we talked about no-till farming as an option to not have so much erosion. But soil erosion causes sediment pollution in waterways. And the USDA has developed guidelines for livestock farmers to prevent manure from becoming polluted runoff. So that's another issue is animal waste from livestock like cattle and things like that. So in urban areas, in addition to point source pollution from many sources, urban runoff is a significant source of non-point um, <clears throat> pollution. So again, that non-point pollution is the hardest to contain, and so it can be from runoff of agricultural lands, runoff from cities. That runoff is a big deal when it comes to water pollution. Urban runoff water um, is water that has traveled off of buildings, across roadways. It carries a variety of waste as a result. It can have salt, construction debris, animal waste, garbage, oil, hydrocarbon chemicals. Um, other pollutants all end up dissolved in rainwater, which then drains to waterways, causing significant pollution over a wide area. So again, imagine how much easier it is to realize, hey, there's a sewage pipe spilling sewage into that river. Let's do something about it. 
versus trying to figure out how to keep water from running across the city when it rains and taking tons of different pollutants in there. So that's why, like I said, point source a lot of times is a little bit easier to control. So urban runoff, many pollutants may be carried from storm drains on streets to streams and rivers. Other everyday pollutants include used motor oil, which is often illegally poured into storm drains, and heavy metals. Um, so this is just showing a picture. I know you probably can't read all of this again. It just came from the textbook. Um, or you can just look at it on my PowerPoint. This is showing all the different types of chemicals that can be included in runoff just from our houses. Um, and this isn't even a big city. This is just a normal house that you probably live in. So groundwater pollution. Half of the people in the U.S. obtain their drinking water from groundwater sources. So of course that's where we get from our aquifers. Quality is a concern because, like we said, um, especially in agricultural areas, you have pesticides, fertilizers, organic compounds. They can seep into groundwater from the landfills. Remember we talked about the sanitary landfill being um, having a barrier, but sometimes that barrier can be broken. Uh, storage tanks, backyards, golf courses, and agricultural lands, etc. Cleanup of contaminated groundwater is not always technically feasible. It's very costly if it's even possible to accomplish. So again, the problem with the groundwater is the vast amount of pollutants. Like if we could say, okay, look, our groundwater gets polluted by pesticides, and that's it, we could take care of it. But the problem is you might have fertilizer, you might have pesticides, you have human waste, you have heavy metals, somebody might have poured motor oil in there. All of these different chemicals need to be removed in different ways. So that's where it becomes very costly and sometimes almost impossible. So sources of groundwater contamination. Again, this is just a picture showing lots of different things. So here we have like a power plant and so it's uh, replacing the water that it pumps in with hot water. So it's releasing some of that thermal pollution. We have a stream that's gonna have some runoff from these surrounding areas with pollution in it. Uh, we have a sewer line that's dumping into this area. Uh, we have leaking underground storage tank with gasoline. We have fertilizers and pesticides washing off from this agricultural area. So you just have all kinds of pollution just in this little diagram right here. So um, let's talk about some freshwater issues that have been had. So the Three Gorges Dam um, on the Yangtze River in China, remember, I teach chemistry, we don't normally use words like this, I don't know how to say this river, in China, is the largest dam in the world on the world's longest river. It was completed in 2008 and it had multiple goals. One thing was to control floods during the rainy season and water reserves during the dry season, so they needed to get rid of flood water in the rainy season, but they needed to be able to reserve water during their dry season. And electricity generation, remember we talked about that as a renewable source of energy was hydropower. Um, but the problem is, of course, every time you have some positives, you have some negatives. So along with the positive effects of the dam, there are many negatives. So look, here's our positives, here's our negatives. So relocation of 2 million people due to reservoir placement. So in other words, where they built the dam, where that water was going to back up, 2 million people had to move out of that area. Habitat fragmentation, it destroyed ecosystems. Decline in fish species and rare freshwater mammals endangered. So remember, we talked about that fish, they go upstream to spawn, but they can't if there's a dam in the way. Um, silt buildup behind the dam, so that silt that normally travels down with the river, once it hits the dam, it just kind of builds and builds and builds. Riverbank destabilization and erosion, increasing landslide probability, and massive water pollution issues due to increased industry and shipping. So every time in this class when we talk about a problem that we have as either a nation or as a world in general, a lot of you may be like thinking, oh, well, we could just do this, or oh, why don't we just do this? But remember, hopefully I hope you've realized throughout this whole year, every time there's some positives, there's always some negatives. So yes, fossil fuels are cheap, but they're very polluting. Yes, wind energy is non-polluting, but unless you live in an area where it's constantly windy, it's not really helpful. Yes, dams are one of the uh, most efficient ways to generate electricity, but it's going to cause all of these problems. Alright, so like I said, that's why a lot of these problems still exist and will for many years, because we have to come together and figure out what's the best option, even though there's always going to be some downsides. So. 
that was our last lesson video. So I hope you have a good rest of the year.